Hi, I'm Bob Breithaupt. We're here at Capital University and I want to show you the percussion wing, our percussion basement as we call it. Uh, we feel like our facilities here at Capital University are perhaps the best in the United States for an undergraduate only program and certainly among the, the top overall facilities uh, in the United States for percussion. Uh, we have 13 dedicated spaces on this level for percussion and you'll see those as we make this little tour. So we'll start uh, this way and we'll make this quick. Uh, this is our primary teaching studio. As you can see, we this is uh, uh, sort of reflective of uh, a lot of, the, of what we do. So we have, uh, this is a five octave Yamaha marimba, another marimba, uh, so a professional set of timpani, uh, a couple of drum sets, uh, and uh, Malatech uh, Bob Becker xylophone, a couple of sort of specialty uh, uh, concert snare drums, and then additional snare drums in the corner and vibraphone. So this is representative of, of a lot of what we do. Our second uh, studio, a teaching studio, has much the same. This has a uh, unique um, marimba in here. This is a, a Demoro five and a third octave marimba a couple of concert snares, obviously some xylophone and uh, vibraphone, uh, concert timpani, drum set, and, uh, and computer. So uh, one thing I would mention is that at Capital University, our students really don't run into many problems in terms of practice space for a couple of reasons. We have, we have the space, and uh, with the exception of a few spots, like our office over here, and our library, the students have access to this space for their own practice when teaching is not going on. Next, we go into uh, one of our rooms that we house uh, <coughs> world percussion in. You'll see a lot more of that here in a little bit in another part of the building. But this is some of our uh, high-end uh, world percussion things, along with uh, some our steel drums and even some marching percussion. So again. This room can be used as a practice room, mostly storage, but can be used as a practice room, especially for a Latin percussion setup. We'll move down the hall. I would, I would mention uh, as we go down here that our lockers, this is something we don't think about a lot, but our lockers, are, we especially found these, they're deep enough to accommodate a uh, set of symbol, a symbol bag, uh, uh, books, and uh, percussion mallets and so forth, cases. Uh, that's a real problem in some places. The other thing that this brings to light is the fact that at Capitol, we have high-end Yamaha drum sets in every space that would be necessary for a rehearsal uh, and a couple of practice rooms. So it is not necessary for a student to bring their drum set with them when they come to, to Capitol. They can bring it, you can leave it in your room or in an apartment and uh, if you need to play gigs, but we do not need, and we don't want you to bring your own personal uh, drum set onto the, onto the uh, space. Okay, this is our uh, library. We walk past the library and repair office for the students. Uh, our, our work study students do great work, and, uh, and they really help us keep things in order, which is a real task. As we move down the hall here, uh, we have three practice spaces. This is more of a traditional space here, um, where we have uh, a, um, a five octave uh, virtual marimba. We've got a beautiful old, uh, one we'll come on in here and take a look at this. This is uh, one of our really uh, classic vibraphones. This is a, 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 an early, late 60s, early 70s uh, Mustard vibraphone. We have a really great collection of vibraphones interested and then a nice glockenspiel for practice, more traditional. This is a, um, a practice version of what we saw earlier. This is a DeMauro 5 and a 3rd practice marimba. It's a practice marimba because it doesn't have resonators. And so, but this room is very resonant and it uh, actually sounds great in here. Uh, we have a, a space here that we use for multiple percussion setups. You can see that there a variety of things that are, that are here. We can also bring things in here. So if a person's working on, even more than one person, working on a multiple percussion setup, 
they can bring that into this space, set it up, and leave it set. So they're not tearing it up or tear, you know, tearing it down, setting it up each time they practice. Uh, so that makes things uh, go a lot smoother. If we go down here at the end of the hall, uh, we'll see another one of our uh, classic vibraphones. This is a Deegan Imperial vibraphone that we just had uh, redone here just this year. It's a beautiful instrument. Uh, and we have a keyboard. Uh, and this is nice because uh, we can uh, set this up and with, with a vibraphone with a uh, keyboard and compass. A couple of extra drum sets in the event that we need to take something out. And we have a, other travel uh, things as well. If we look in here, we see a couple of our drum set practice rooms. Uh, one here, uh, one here, and then um, our last individual practice room. Uh, we have a snare drum uh, practice room uh, right here. So we, if a person's working on uh, orchestral or rudimental uh, uh, work, we can come right in here and work, work on that. Uh, we'll move now into uh, probably our main space down here, and that's our uh, percussion uh, uh, rehearsal space. This room is used for a couple of other classes and uh, some combos and so forth, but it's specifically designed for uh, percussion. So as we look around the room, you can see all of the different instruments. Uh, we even have one instrument that's torn down here. That's because we loaned it out to a student to take over the summer. But as we come on in and look around, we can see that this is where our uh, percussion ensembles rehearse. Um, uh, whether it's our concert percussion ensemble, jazz percussion ensemble, um, uh, whether if it's our chamber percussion ensemble or the steel drum band, uh, world percussion ensemble, they'll all rehearse in here. There's plenty of space. And uh, if necessary, this room is, is also available for individual practice. So uh, this is the uh, last stop on the tour of the percussion basement. We'll move next to the other part of the building, which has three primary spaces, percussion storage, uh, and a, the lar a large rehearsal room where some of our large ensembles meet, and then last but not least is our uh, Tyco closet. Okay, now we're going to take a look at uh, our other spot in the building. This is on our first floor where the large ensembles rehearse, but because we have uh, separation between the, this part of the building and the other part of the building, we have duplicate equipment that serves this area. So that's what I'm going to take you through right now is to show you this space. So this is the percussion uh, facility, uh, storage facility. The bass drums here, we have a, a full complement of uh, concert snare drums, um, some of which are being moved around right now. And then uh, as we move on through, uh, you'll see the uh, uh, a second set of uh, Yamaha timpani that we use for some of our, our youth groups and run out concerts. Uh, two vibraphones, a couple of uh, an Adams uh, glockenspiel and a Fall Creek that are very nice. Um, nice xylophone. Uh, a marimba typically sits in this spot. And this, this particular uh, area serves our contemporary ensembles as well. So we have a, a drum set here, Yamaha kit, with three different size bass drums, uh, 22, 20, and 18, to accommodate the various styles. Uh, and along the wall over here, you'll see our um, uh, American drum uh, uh, timpani. Uh, again, a professional timpani, like the ones we have downstairs, uh, but used for uh, orchestra and uh, the concert band. Uh, as we move into this room, very quickly, this is our large ensemble rehearsal room. And so orchestra, uh, the bands, uh, big band, other groups as well, rock ensemble, will use this space. But for the purposes of percussion, we have to have uh, things readily available that we can get to. So we, we have all of our hardware, we've designed cases that allow us to get to the, the hardware very quickly. Concert toms here, a really nice uh, set of Yamaha concert toms that we like to use. One of our uh, percussion cabinets, which you're typically uh, uh, familiar with, but this holds some hand uh, items. And then 
uh, something that we're particularly proud of, and that would be our collection of, of symbols specifically for concert use. We have, con we have symbols that we use for drum set use, but all of these are, have been uh, uh, matched and uh, brought up here um, for use in the uh, concert setting. And uh, so there's, uh, there's a lot of great stuff in here. A couple of other cabinets that uh, we use for youth groups and, and other settings, but we, but we, we feel like uh, that we have to have the gear available to you uh, as you come in and grab it for a rehearsal because as you know, conductors are sometimes not very patient in terms of waiting for the percussion to get ready. A flute player can just grab their flute and be ready to go. We have to set lots of things up. So whatever we can do to make life a little bit more uh, easy for you as a percussionist, we've tried to do by the use of the, of the different cabinets, by having the, the stands available, by having the symbols identified. Uh, you know, that is, that's part of the process. The last space I want to show you is a, rep, a very unique space. We uh, at Kaplan University have a, an unusual and very cool setting here where we teach our world music to all of our students, whether they're a vocalist, whether they're a percussionist, whether they're a clarinet player, whether they're a Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Arts, no matter what, all students get their world music experience delivered with a class with percussion as a common denominator. So my colleague, Eric Payton, uh, will uh, take the class through uh, study of, of, uh, of Asian music, of South American music, of African music, of Caribbean music, and talk about the music and its culture. And again, using percussion instruments as the common denominator, as the applied part of the class. So how do we do that? If we look in this closet, you'll see probably what's the best collection of Tycho of any place in the United States, at least that we know of. Uh, about 60 Tycho are inside this space along with the other instruments for the other genre. So uh, I'll let uh, Brandon come in here and let him just take a look and show you what we see. It's, it's very impressive and uh, but you can see various genres of music. There we have Surdo up there for Brazil, and obviously the Taiko as we've talked about, and many other, other instruments. We're particularly excited about uh, the opportunity to have this available to you as a student at Kaplan University. So in conclusion, I want to thank you for taking your time to, to look this over. I want to encourage you to uh, come and visit the university and see the, the spaces and more importantly meet the students. That's what this is really all about. And uh, to meet our faculty, okay? I'm here, uh, but I have two other uh, great colleagues, Ryan Kilgore and Eric Payton, who serve as my faculty colleagues here at Capitol. And the process is very simple for you to reach out. Simply come and visit us, talk to our admissions folks, and, uh, and certainly then audition for us to become a member of the studio. So thank you for your time and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. <laughs>